Now, let's get into functions. Right, so when we have a function, right, we have a function add to. We come down with add to. Okay, remember this is how we walk through. We hit the next button. We've now defined the function add to, but we've ignored all the stuff in the middle because the function does not get executed when it's defined. It gets executed when it's called. Excuse me. So we set up two values, val1 equals 10. We put those at that memory, val2 equals 15. And we can print those out. And when we print them out up here, we get 10 and 15, right? Just pretty much like you'd expect. We can come into our add to function, right? When we go into the add to function, we take the arguments to the function, val1 and val2. We copy the first argument into the first variable, right? So this val1, this value in val1 gets copied down into a, a parameter for add to. Also, it has the same name, but it's not the same object. So val1 here gets copied into val1 here. These are distinct. They are not, they're not the same. val2 gets copied into val2. And now we're actually executing up here, and all references to val1 and val2 are references to... Um, the local variables, val1 and val2 within the add to routine, not the global variables out here. We come through, we add the value of val2 into the local value of val1. So this val1 becomes 25, val2 remains unchanged. And now we're going to return val1 out of the function. When we do, these go away and these values are restored. So when we go, when we do this, right, we return the value 25. 25 replaces this function call. So we print out the 25. But now the 25 and the 15 that were part of add2 are completely gone. They no longer exist. They've been wiped. So now when we come back and print val1 and val2, we are back to our original values, right? That's how parameters work for simple things like integers and, and, and also for, for things like strings and tuples that don't allow you to, to actually change um, the string or the tuple once they're created. Let's try this again. This time, let's set up L1 equals, um, why not, RPI, uh, WPI and uh, MIT. All right, and L2, we're going to make, we'll make it RIT and Caltech. And we'll need some appropriate. And we need another. All right. So. We come down, we set up L1. Actually, I need to make this call too. Okay, that should be enough. All right, so we come up, right? We're sitting here, we define our variable L1, right? Again, it's setting up a list. So L1 actually refers to the list. It doesn't, it doesn't contain the list. We set up L2, L2 refers to the list. It doesn't contain the list. When we do add two, we come in here and now look, this is a little different, right? When you pass lists in, as arguments, 
you take whatever's in the argument, in this case, whatever is in L1, and what L1 has is a reference to the start of the list, start of this list. That value gets copied into our parameter. And similarly, argument L2 gets copied into the L2 parameter. And again, L2 actually points to the start of this list. It doesn't contain the values of this list. So that's different. So now when we come down through here and we execute our val1 equals val1 plus val2, right? Plus equals is just shorthand for val1 equals val1 plus val2. val1 plus val2 is the concatenation operation. And it concatenates RIT, the list, the second list, the val2 list, onto the end of the val1 list. Uh, yeah, val1 list. In doing that, since val1 and l1 both point to the same place, both refer to exactly the same list in memory, now we've actually changed our l1 list. And if we go through, we'll return, right, we return the augmented list. And now when we print l1, l1 actually refers to that augmented list as well. L2, uh, L2 has, has, has stayed the same. Okay, so that's, you have to be careful of that. When you're passing in a list to, um, this is in fact the place where, where we see aliasing the worst and where it's hardest to recover from, is in doing these types of operations uh, where we pass lists in to functions as, uh, as uh, parameters or arguments. Okay, um, how are we doing? Any questions on that? Yeah, I have a quick question. Sure, shoot. Uh, is there a way to set um, L1 equal L2 or L2 equal L1, but by making them equal the same list in a separate memory? So if you were to put it into a function, it wouldn't augment the original list, besides just having to do L2 equals and manually type in the list that L1 is. So there are a number of ways to do it. We'll learn a bunch of them today or over the next couple of days. But the easiest way is L2 copy. So, okay. or, so the dot you. copy operator creates a copy instead of, instead of allowing the aliasing. There's also some things with slicing that we'll get into. Um, yes, you can alias functions. Um, in fact, you can pass functions into... into uh, yeah, you can, you can pass fun the the thing is is you can't really change a function based on the function pointer. So, you know, I I have to think about how we would actually exhibit aliasing, but functions can be passed around as arguments uh, and they do come in the same way. Um yeah. Yes, I have a quick so I have a quick question. So, if I do L3 is equal to L2 copy, mm -hmm. now L3 and L2 contain the same like I guess like elements, but so but the thing is it's not the same memory location. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. okay, see, you see how there's two separate, how these pointers point to two separate places in memory? Think of Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's exactly just... what's happening. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, I'm just the that's... slightest. Uh, I'm just the slightest bit confused. When you first uh, called the function with, you know, val, val 1 equaling 10 and val 2 equaling 15, uh, you printed it out in like, you got 25, but then when you printed them out again, the actual like val1 and val2 were unchanged. But right. then when you did that with like l1 and l2, l1 was actually like changed right after the second time you called it. Right. So let's walk through this again. We're up here, right? Um, val1 and val2 have been set to 10 and 15, and 10 and 15 prints out. Right. When we come in and we make our call to add two, we take our, our arguments, val1 and val2, right? And we copy them into the parameters val1 and val2 in add2. And val1 and val2 in add2 are parameters. They act as local variables for function add2. Since we're storing the actual values here, when we copy them in, we copy in values. 
right? So now val1 has 10, val2 has 15. We can go through and we can execute val1 plus equals val2, and we modify, right? 10 plus 15 is 25. val1 now stores the value 25, right? Follow me so far? Okay. Uh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so now when we print it out, or now when we return it, right, we're going to return whatever's currently in val1, which is the value 25. When we hit this print statement, that's what gets printed out here, right, whatever value we're returning. So we're going to return 25, but once we do, we're also going to get rid of the stack frame. We're going to get rid of the, the, the temporary data we set up just for our function. Because we copied in values and they're not referring to the same memory, these values are unchanged up here. So when we go back, these values are unchanged. Now the, the difference is when we come out with lists, right, we can print the lists out. Oops, I didn't print the lists out. We can call add two, right? And we're now in add two. When we get into add two, we take this, When we come into add two, we take the value in L1. Well, the value in L1 is the location of this list. So we take the value in L1 and we copy it into val1. Now they both refer to the same list. It's different. We're not taking these values and putting them here. We're not making a copy of this list. We're actually taking just the value in L1, which was something that referred to this list, and copying that directly into val1. And the same with val2 and, and uh, l2, right? They both point to the same place. Now when we make the change here, right, this is now a concatenation operation. When we make this change here, we're actually changing, you know, we change the val1 list as we expect, but val1 and l1 both refer to the same spot in memory. So as soon as we change val1, we also change l1. That's the whole, per that's the whole concept behind aliasing, right? That's what aliasing is. Okay? Okay, I think I understand. Okay. Play with this a little bit. It, believe it or not, it does make sense. Now the return value is, is the location of val1. We print out the list. Unfortunately, we've also changed l1, and we haven't changed l2, and then we just make the copy. Um, Okay, I can change the, I, well, we did that for L1 and L2, right? This isn't the same, but we can make this V1 and V2. I should have changed it down below. It would be fewer changes. Right, and the same thing still holds. The only difference here is that when we go through VAL1 and VAL2, they get copied into the, the arguments val1 and val2 get copied into parameters v1 and v2, right? It doesn't matter what these are, what these are uh, actually named. All right. And this should continue along and do exactly the same thing. Right? Again, we generate 25, we return 25, but when we get rid of the variables for add2, we're back to where we started from. Um, not so when we set up our L1s and L2s, right? Now, L1, the value in L1, which is a pointer, gets copied into V1. The value in L2 gets copied into V2. So now, since those were both memory references for L1 and L2, V1 and V2 refer to exactly the same memory, and any changes we make um, are reflected back in the original variables. Okay? Okay, um, where am I besides behind? This particular lesson, I end up finding myself behind almost all the time. All right. Um,
Okay, let's let's move on to the next. I just realized that this said something that's kind of confusing me, so we'll see if it confuses you guys. Um, let's move on to the next example, which is smallest two. And I can't grab all that. There we go. Go to the other side. Okay, so if we go into smallest two, um, and let's copy over this. Let's look at this example as well. Um, we'll start off at the beginning. Here's a similar example. Um, if we come in here, uh, we, we've defined our sort before, right? You guys know about the sort function, sort sorts lists. And the dot sort function sorts lists in place. So this will keep the same list and not, uh, yeah, this will keep the same list. It, it doesn't create a new list. Um, if we come through here, this is just another example. We generate smallest two. Smallest two is going to pick out the smallest two values from a list by sorting the list and then returning um, the first element, the zeroth element. And if it's long enough, it'll return, you know, if it's long enough, it returns a zeroth element if it's not the empty list. And if it's long enough to have two elements, it returns um, the second element as well. So these are, are pretty, uh, pretty simple operations. We can set up a list uh, 35, 34, 20, 40, 60, 30. The two smallest values are 20 and 30. Um, we can come in, we'll print before function. The values are what we expect. We're going to walk into our function and now notice that the my list parameter in smallest two gets assigned the values list uh, passed as the argument, right? So values gets copied into my list. Well, val values is a memory reference, so it gets copied in there. If we come in and we do mylist.sort, right, mylist.sort sorts in place, so it just reorders these so they're in the correct order. Now we go through and we pull out, we, we create a new list, a new empty list. We append a, a 20 to it, right, the, 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 the smallest element, the element at mylist0. We append we're, we're bigger than two elements in that list, so we take the second element off, which is the 30, and now we're done, and we return uh, a new list with values 20 and 30, and uh, we print that out as the result here. That should give us 20 and 30, but now when we print values, because we actually have this aliasing going on, um, we end up Yeah, we end up uh, uh, sorting values list as well. And we get this, uh, our, our list is not the same as it was when we started. Okay, so this is another um, example of aliasing. Um, it, it turns out that if we want to keep my list the same, we can do that pretty simply by doing um, S list for sorted list. And then remember we had this function sorted, we're sorted returns a new list. If we do this now, right, and we start over again, we come down, we set up our values. We again, we're starting off the same my list points to the same list. But now when we do the sorted, we're taking and we're creating a new local variable sorted and the sorted version of my list gets put into sorted. We don't touch the original list. And as we walk on down through, um, and this should be S list instead of my list. So I have a question. Sure. So what this function does is it puts in values and then it, then you create in the function, you create a, new, a variable which is a new list and that new list becomes values which is already sorted in the function and it prints out values 
Well, so remember that sorted, right? My list dot sort sorts in place. It doesn't create a new list. It modifies the existing list. The function sorted returns a new list that's in sorted and doesn't touch my list. This is from uh, the list uh, lecture a, a couple a couple lectures ago, right? So now when we come through here, right, we're copying values into my list, right? Values in my list both point to the same part of memory. But instead of sorting in place and modifying these values, we actually create a new list that's sorted and we point S list at it. Okay? So it's, it's, that's what I wanted to point out was why sorted works one way and sort works a different way. And this was something from, from the last lecture on lists if you go back and look at it. We talked about some functions returning a value and some functions uh, not returning a value but modifying the lists. Sorted is not imported. That rhymes. Uh, sorted is a built-in. Okay, so it makes sense. And again, if we do this, this should just print out the values. Right, it creates, it still creates the new list, this time referencing S list instead of my list. My list still points to the same unsorted list and everything comes out the same as it was originally instead of changed. All right. Um, so sort, insert, append, pop, remove, all of those change a list. Um, operations that create new lists. Slicing, we'll discuss that in a few minutes. Copy, I already showed you that. Uh, concatenation and replication. And of course, the list function, all create new lists. Um, so yeah, that's... You know, if you want to create a new list, you can do one of these. If you want to keep the old list, you do um, one of these. All right. Let's, you know, I, I would like to give you time, but I think I'm going to, we'll just take a quick look at the exercises and uh, then we're going to have to move on because we don't have a lot of time today. Um, so the first two exercises, right, this is just, the same thing we did originally, right? It's setting up a list and it's having you play with aliasing and copying so that you can create new lists and alias old lists and just make sure that you can that you can follow through and follow the same things that we did in, in the first couple of, of uh, pages here. Um, so this is you know just something to be aware of. Um, this one's kind of fun. The best way to handle these are to draw the diagram like I drew on the whiteboard, right? I know that it's kind of a by the time I was done, it was getting a little messy. But if you follow the steps, watch back at the video. Um, you know, draw it like we, we drew it. When you when you create a, a list, you create the list, you take the variable, and you draw an arrow to it. Um, when you do L2 equals L1, you draw the arrow to the same place. When you do L2 copy, you create a new list. Um, you know, L3 equals L2 copy, you create a new list and point L3 to it. And if you do that, this, these two, first two exercises work pretty good. And it works pretty good with the head and tail, too, although now you're starting to get into more complications, um, aliasing in, in, uh, in uh, um, function calls, etc. So just take a, you know, take, take a look at these. They're not too bad, um, but they can be very confusing. They're not, I say they're not too bad. They can be very confusing originally. So just take some time and work through them, and, and you'll, be able to, uh, you'll be able to handle them. You know, take a look at the right answers once, you, once you've uh, uh, submitted them once without looking at the right answers. 